Welcome to Boat Buyer's Secret Weapon. I am your host, Captain Matt, and today we're talking about boats you should never buy. These are going to be a huge headache. Uh, you're going to be very disappointed. You may think you're getting a great deal, but you want to stay away from these boats at all costs. So there's going to be a lot of different kind of categories that we're going to talk about. So let's jump in. Of course, we're brought to you by the Boat Buyer's Secret Weapon. We've got hundreds of videos on the channel for you to check out. Be sure to subscribe, get all the new ones. We've got over 4,500 subscribers, over half a million views. We got our free Boat Buyer's Toolkit. You can get it at BoatBuyersSecretWeapon.com slash toolkit. Our podcast on Apple, Stitcher, Spotify, all the major podcast networks, and we've got tons of articles and other resources. Just go to BoatBuyersSecretWeapon.com, and you can grab that all there. Uh, other stuff that you can't get uh, anywhere else but the website. So check that out. Let's talk about the first kind of boat you want to never buy, a boat that's been sunk. Um, and it could be it just they left the, build, the, the plug in and water filled up in the boat and it got into the motor there can be major issues associated with that so if you know that a boat's been sunk uh, if you see a water line in the engine compartment uh, if you see other indications that maybe this boat's been sunk um, i encourage you to get one a boat history report which will tell you if the boat's been salvaged uh, if it's had a catastrophic event but any indications that the boat has been sunk, stay away because there's likely going to be some major, major issues. Unless you are very mechanically inclined and you want to take the chance and dig in, uh, you want to stay away from a sunken boat. Next is a boat that hasn't been run in years. You know, I, I see people on... Uh, social media, on chat groups, uh, in forums that say, I found this boat. It's a great deal. It's in perfect shape. It's pristine. Interior is clean. It looks like it's off the showroom floor. They haven't run it for five years. Um, you know, I, I, I'm going to get it. And, and I found it. This is a diamond that, uh, you know, nobody else found. Well, truth be told, what happens, unless the boat is put away exactly right, when arised, engines fogged, you are going to have major mechanical issues with the engine, with the drive, because mechanical things need to move. They need to move and get lubricated with oil. Otherwise, you're going to have rust. You're going to have corrosion. Uh, you're going to have things breaking down. And here's what happens. It's not just the engine. It's not just the drive and the gears. It's going to be your bilge pump. You're going to have ticky-tacky stuff failing on you every time you go out. And unless you are very, again, very mechanically inclined and you're looking for that project, you are able to do these types of, of things yourself, um, I really will encourage you, stay away from a boat that hasn't been run in years. It may fire up. It may run good for the first 30 minutes. But like I said, there's going to be things that are going to just continuously pop up and be headaches and be headaches and be headaches. And if you're not that project boat person, if you're not that fix it, if you're not that mechanically inclined person that can dig into things, troubleshoot errors, um, have the right tools to get in based on your engine, uh, I'm going to encourage you, don't buy a boat that hasn't been run in several years. Next is a boat with a soft transom. What happens with fiberglass boats is you put a, a through-haul bolt through, uh, like a extended swim platform in this situation. Uh, you have just the, the regular through-haul fittings uh, that in the boat's construction over time, water can intrude in there. It can get up in the wood that is the, the basis of the support for that transom. It can get in there, it can start rotting that wood with all of the force and torque that comes from the engine and that heavy motor hanging off the back. What can happen is that can get soft and you can have exactly what happened in this picture is that wood rots. You can see it's right on the bolts. If you, if you look on that image, you can see those bolts coming right through there. Water was seeping in time over time over time and eventually, 
boom, it, it cracked, and now you've got a rotten transom, and that is a major fix. You've got to cut all that out. You've got to recut the, the right type of wood. You've got to fit it in there properly. You've got to re-glass it in um, and then re-plumb everything. Then you've got to make sure that any through-haul fittings or bolts that you need to attach to that transom don't continue to have that problem and you, you get a soft transom again in just a handful of years. Um, it's something you need to inspect. It's on the Boat Buyer's Toolkit checklist. Uh, how to check it, there's a video that goes into that. But soft transoms are just a problem waiting to happen and it's just a matter of time before something major like this happens with an outboard, uh, a stern drive, you get water coming through there and now you get uh, water into your engine. Uh, it, it can be even worse there because that through haul for the for the stern drive is popping out below the water line. You start getting in water intrusion there, and you're going to have a big giant mess on your hand. That's very difficult to fix on a stern drive as well. If you like this video so far, be sure to subscribe. Like I said, we've got a, over 100 videos and always releasing new ones. Hit that like button. Hit that don't like button. Share it. Ask a question, and we'll be glad to uh, answer it for you. Uh, we answer all of our questions. The next thing to avoid is a boat with a soft floor. Uh, just like that soft transom, it's an indication that water seeping in through the deck uh, into the stringer system potentially likely into the stringer system which you really can't t tell this is what it, that stringer looks like they're those kind of joices and structure of the boat so you can imagine if water is getting in there and those stringers are getting rotten uh, before they were encapsulating or even if it's encapsulated and there's still water able to intrude into that wood it's going to rot it gets soft now you've got the flexibility of the boat which means there's going to be more flex in the hull which means that you're likely going to get cracks eventually the floor is going to fall through it's going to be dangerous it's not going to be a solid boat anything that's mounted to the deck is going to start coming loose your seats um, any ski lockers uh, are, are going to start coming loose and it is a big enormous project to replace the floor uh, on a boat anywhere where there's a bolt a screw uh in floor locker that is set in that deck there's the potential for water to get in there um, once you start tearing it up and you get that initial flooring off after you've taken the seats out you've taken everything out of the boat um, now you've got to go and hope that those stringers aren't aren't uh, wet. If those are, now you got to tear those out. You've got old fiberglass. You've got all of the wiring harnesses. You've got all of the um, the steering cable, the shift cable, all of that. The fuel tank, um, depending on the type of boat that you're looking at, you've got to address all that. Rerun everything. Put in new stringers. Preferably glass it. Put in your new deck, glass that down. Now put in all your all of your seats and your um, finishing pieces, and you've got to do that and do it in a way that you don't get water intrusion again. It's a big giant mess, long term, um, time consuming job that you need to have the talent, the skills, and the tools to do. Um, and it's not just a, oh, it's a soft floor, no big deal. Um, it can be a major, major problem, and it's only going to get worse over time. Next are older jet boats. Now, I love the jet boats. I love the Yamaha jet boats. Um, Chaparral, Scarab have made newer jet boats. Older jet boats, here's the thing with jet engines. Um, they run at very high RPM. They are under a lot of stress a lot of pressure and those older ones they tend to be very finicky they tend to and it's not a knock on sea dew um sea dew is a, a great company and they, they've got uh, a great backing and great products just these older ones they tend to have a lot of issues i really encourage you to stay away from those older jet boats um that uh you know again just like some of the other ones we talked about there's likely going to be issues that come up consistently and it's really going to impact your boating fun. Next, we have a boat with an OMC drive. Now, 
OMC went bankrupt in December of 2000, so 20 years ago they went bankrupt, which means it's very difficult to get parts for these boats. It's even more difficult to find a mechanic that knows how to work on these OMC drives when something does happen. It's it may seem like you can get a thousand dollar boat and get on the water and you're going to have a great time it's the boats clean the hull is solid the transom solid the floor solid everything looks great i can tell you that eventually you're going to have a, a repair that needs to be made on those omc drives and you're going to run into an issue with parts and now you're going to have this thousand two thousand three thousand five thousand dollar boat um that doesn't run and you're gonna have to invest five ten thousand dollars on a new drive system and, and try to try to make it work with the engine maybe have to replace the whole thing it, it's a, a very difficult process to make those to swap those out it, it's not just a plug-and-play where you take one drive off and you put a new one on uh, there's linkage, there's gears that have to, it's just, it's more involved than you may think uh, in these OMC drives. Like I said, the, the company's been bankrupt for 20 years or more. Um, stay away from them. You'll thank me later. Next is the force outboards. Um, the force outboards, they weren't all that reliable when they were brand new. The They stopped making forces in 1990. Again, the same problem with those OMC drives. They're difficult to get parts. Um, they're very finicky. Again, you, you may seem like you can get a good deal on one. If you are going to buy a boat that's got a force outboard, just assume that you're going to have to repower that with a different outboard, which means you've got to replace the controls, the cabling, uh, the steering and the shift cables. All that has to be swapped out and the cost of the, of the new outboard and figure that in to the cost of your boat uh, because you are you are likely going to have major major issues uh, with these engines if you buy a, a boat with one. Now this may seem like it's out of you know man I found a great deal on a newer boat a 2005 2006 2007 it's got a Volvo drive on it Volvo is a great company but what you may not know if it has the X DP drive. This is a composite drive that that Volvo Pinto released in the 2002 Miami Boat Show to big acclaim and big fanfare. Everybody was excited about this. Well, what happened is the composite material, the way they designed it, uh, was causing some big issues. Uh, the U joints, the bellows, the gimbal bearing. Uh, there was water intrusion uh, because the con composite was cracking the material that they used was causing problems volvo continued to make this drive um, and, and continued putting them in new boats uh, and, and the 5.7 liter and the 8.1 liter with these xp xdp drives were exceptionally problematic 60 percent of them about from what the research i've done and what i know about the industry uh, had issues now they would come out with the bulletin uh, and they would say, "Hey, we're gonna we're gonna fix it under warranty." The warranty went away, and then Volvo kind of said, "Hey, you're stuck with it." There are several class action lawsuits that were filed. Um, based on what I could find, none of them were ultimately um, enacted. So the consumers kind of just got stuck holding the bag. And now Volvo has said, hey, we want this drive out of here. So they're, they're not making most parts available uh, except the basic impellers uh, and, and bellows. But they would like these kind of to get away. If you search their website, you won't find anything. But just search Volvo XDP drives. And it's the, it seems like from the comments... 2005, 2006, and 2007 models are the ones that are the most problematic. Now, that may be because they were the most produced um, in 2002, 2003, 2004. They were just starting to get put into boats. Um, but stay away from this drive. Plan on, if you're going to, if you find a boat 
and it's got the XTP drives on it, know that you're going to have to replace them uh, and, and figure that in. And a new Volvo drive, um, there's going to be some modification that needs to be made, some adapting that needs to happen. Uh, but from estimates, you know, it's going to be eight to 15,000 per drive uh, from, from kind of what I found. So stay away from these. If you see, an, I, I've seen, uh, I had a 07 Four Winds that was a beautiful boat, um, great condition, low hours, and it had this drive on it. I ultimately had to tell the, um, tell the seller that wanted me to sell it for him, listen, I, I can't in good conscience sell this boat to anybody because this drive is going to be a nightmare for them. Um, beautiful, everything about the boat was fantastic. A, a nice 27-foot four winds. I, I can picture a navy blue and white. Gorgeous boat. But this drive was a nightmare waiting to happen and basically just sticking somebody with a very, very expensive repair on what seemed like a great boat so stay away from that if I kept you from buying it um, this video just saved you fifteen thousand dollars or more um, so stay away from those and um, and you will thank me again this was brought to you by Boat Buyer Secret Weapon. If you haven't, grab that toolkit, the the inspection checklist, the questions to ask. It comes with a boat ownership calculator to calculate the cost of ownership in your area for the type of boat you're looking for. There's two bonus videos that walk you through the toolkit, walk you through the calculator, and there's another two bonus videos that you can only get. Um, they're not on the channel. You'll only get them with that toolkit. Uh, check out the podcast on Apple, Stitcher, Spotify, the articles, Boat Buyer, just Google Boat Buyer Secret Weapon, uh, and you'll find a ton of great information there. Subscribe to the channel. You will find a lot of great information. We're always releasing new videos. Just hit that red button there to subscribe. Again, the toolkit is at BoatBuyerSecretWeapon.com slash toolkit. And YouTube has recommended a couple videos for you that I know you will enjoy and get value out of. Thanks a lot, and we will talk to you next time.